Hello and welcome to Technician's Crew Pass. My name is Chris DeBias, and in this episode of Crew Pass TV, I'm going to be road testing the Kramer VP790. Now, this is a Genlock presentation switcher scaler. So, let's have a look. Basically, inside the box, um, all the things that you would expect are a remote, rackies, batteries, uh, IC lead. Uh, the actual switcher itself. Um, pretty lightweight, as most of the Kramer stuff is. Um, basic front panel, uh, rear panel. We might start with the uh, front panel. I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, basically, it's got uh, HQV, which is uh, Hollywood quality video processing, uh, flexible wrap, uh, wrap mapping, uh, edge blending, which is kind of cool. It's got a data rate of up to three gigabytes. Uh, S, uh, sorry, 3G. Um, SDI, HDMI, DVI, VGA analog component, um, composite S-video inputs and signal capabilities of up to 1080p with WUXGA, pretty cool. Um, also HDTV capabilities, Genlock inputs uh, and it's HDCP compliant, very cool. So let's have a look, um, front panel is pretty standard, you just got all of your inputs here, so uh, 3G SDI, uh, VGA, HDMI, DVI. Got test patterns built in here as well, always a great function. This actually has picture in picture, so you can picture in picture um, or pip any of the inputs, which is really cool. Um, and then you've just got the menu capability over here, so you can um, control the menu from the front, so that's the on-screen display menu, or you can um, web interface into it. Let's have a look at the back. So on the back, we've just got, uh, like I said, 3G uh, SDI, which is pretty standard these days. You've got um, uh, composite inputs, you've got the Genlock, um, basically you've got the HDMI, the PC or 15 pin VGA, um, DVI as well. Now one of the really cool things that I like about this is your outputs, which is um, 15 pin VGA, DVI and 3G SDI, you can all be run concurrently. So that's really cool, gives you a couple of options there. Uh, also got um, program port in, ethernet port in, because this has a little web interface as well that you can log on to, and it has RS-232. So that's pretty much the overview. I want to connect a laptop to it, have a look at their web interface, and then maybe we'll fire it up and see what we can do with it. Hello, I'm Clint Hoffman, Vice President of Marketing for Kramer Electronics, and I want to thank you for tuning in to KTV. For over 30 years now, Kramer Electronics has been your go-to partner in Pro-AV for reliable audio, video, and computer graphics video, signal processing and routing equipment. In this high-tech day and age, we are very pleased to bring you a YouTube channel full of videos that provide real-world technical solutions as well as in-depth reviews of Kramer product features. So please, subscribe to our channel today to start getting the answers you need. Okay, so here we are. I've just powered up the unit, um, got a PC laptop, uh, run the Ethernet cable directly into the laptop, loaded Chrome as a web browser, typed in 192.168.1.39, which is the Kramer default IP addresses for their units, and basically it gives us this little web interface. Now, the web interface is just an easy way to navigate the menu rather than have um, doing it through the front panel. So let's just have a quick look. The really cool thing here is it shows you input resolution. Uh, you can also click on the input here and you can choose what you want to do. So you've got 3G SDI, you've also got the audio routing from your SDI and your HDMI, which is pretty cool. You've got your um, horizontal and vertical position. Um, let's just go back. You've also got picture. So picture just gives you a bit of uh, functionality here. So you've got your brightness, contrast, so on and so on. You've also got your output. Now the output's really cool because it's just an easy way to change uh, your output resolution. You've all, uh, up to 1080i or 1080p, um, uh, different frame rates as well. You've also got your zoom on your horizontal and vertical um, uh, pan for edge blending and bits and pieces. Uh, then if we just go to setup, I'll just show you these profiles. So basically you can set up uh, profiles and save them. So you can come back and reload those. So if you've got a regular client or a regular event where you install this, it's really easy to recall those profiles. A uh, really good way to get things moving quickly. You've also got net network set up here and control set up. Um, again, if you want to get into those, you can have a look around. Uh, file upload, you've got a backup and restore as well. So you can actually back up the, um, the saved files or the data directly off the unit. So that's just a quick overview of the um, web interface. I think the web interface on a lot of the Chrome stuff is much easier than going through the front panel. 
but um, some people are used to that. So the good thing about this is you can put that on a network and basically upload the profiles that you need when you need them. Okay, so here we are. I've just got a MacBook Pro uh, running VGA uh, straight into the Switcher Scaler. Basically, I've just got a um, film clip or music video just looping on that. I've then got a DVD player here. It is an old DVD player. I originally tried to set up HDMI into the Switcher Scaler and for some reason the HDMI output didn't work. So what I've done is just run um, uh, RCA or Composite in which is actually really cool because if you look at the video, um, this is actually, I'm playing off the DVD player, James Bond, Dr. No, and you can see that the upscaling there is pretty good. So I'm taking that composite input and I'm upscaling that to 1080i at 50 hertz. So you can see that the quality is pretty good, especially for running composite. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with that. So what, um, what I wanna show you is actually I wanna show you how to set up the PIP. Basically the menu that I showed you via the web interface is the menu within inside the unit. But one of the things that I found a little bit tricky to get my head around um, was how to actually set up the PIP so that you can use the PIP button on the front. So I'll show you that. Um, so basically, uh, I've just got the DVD player. And then if I switch over, I've also got, just got this music video looping. So what I'll do is I'll just go to black so you can see the menu better and you're not distracted by the pretty girls. And basically, if we go to the menu here, and what you've got to do is you'll see that this is the menu items, but there's no PIP menu. What you've actually got to do to activate the PIP is, uh, PIP is picture in picture for anybody who doesn't know that, sorry. Um, what you've got to do is go to setup and then you scroll down to operation mode and you've got to put it on to PIP single. So just click it over. Now what happens is the unit will reboot. And basically when it reboots uh, that menu, which is the main menu, and you can access it via the web interface as well, uh, that main menu will now have a little heading called PIP, uh, picture in picture, and that gives you all the picture in picture options. So what you do is you go into that menu and you choose um, to turn the picture in picture on. You can choose what size you want it, where you want it to be, lo um, where you want it to be uh, located on the screen. And then basically once you set the back end, all you have to do is you, you press the PIP button on the front and the PIP will turn on and off. Now, uh, you can't choose more than one input. So basically, you've, you've got to think about it because if you wanted to bring a PIP up mid-show, you, uh, you can't just hit the PIP button and go, oh, I want the PC or, the, or say, oh, I want the SDI input or I want the HDMI input. Basically, what you've got to do is you've actually got to think about it. Um, so you need to set it up before your show and when you hit the PIP button, it'll only recall what you've just set up. So just to explain that, if I just go back to the menu, you'll now see at the top here, there's a PIP menu. And if we just go to the PIP menu and we say, I want to do picture in picture, um, which is picture overlaid on top of another picture. And then you've got to choose the input. So you can only choose one input at, at a time. If you wanted to change the input of the PIP, you'd have to come back into the menu and uh, do that. So I'm just going to choose uh, VGA. So there's the VJ input. You'll see that's popped straight up um, because I've actually, at the moment, my background or my main um, source is just SDI and I don't have SDI, anything SDI plugged in. So you can see that um, uh, it's just a black screen so you can see the menu better. So basically just to show you, I've chosen VGA um, and then you've got uh, the position, sorry, the size of the pip and then you've, oops, sorry, fat fingers. And then you've also got where you want it. So I can say where I want to move it to. So I can move it to the top or I can move it to the top left or I can move it to the bottom right, bottom left. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and then once you're done, you just save the settings, of course, uh, and menu out. Now I'm just going to uh, change inputs to my... Um, uh, DVD, which is the James Bond DVD. And what you'll see now is that the DVD is in the, is in the background because the PIP function's on. Um, and you've also got the, uh, the uh, main image uh, on top. So uh, basically, 
that's how it works. You can run them concurrently. Um, I'm, I haven't seen any transitions. So when you actually, I'll just show you if I turn the pip off. So this is the turning the pip off. So that's going back to my main input that I've chosen. Um, and then if I turn the pip on, so uh, I'll just turn the pip on. It just pops up. I haven't actually seen any like fading or anything. Um, it's just literally from what I could tell, it's just straight on. Um, now, just to explain um, as well, the um, basically you can choose any of the inputs um, to, to be the pip, but you've actually got to have a source coming into them, of course. So that's pretty much it. Um, just really basically showing you the functionality of the unit. I'm really impressed with the upscaling. Um, if I just turn the pip off and just show you the video only. Um, so at the moment, I'm just showing the uh, composite coming in. So that's just coming straight out of the DVD player, RCA composite into the scaler um, at a really low resolution. I'm then upscaling that to 1080i at 50 hertz. And if we just go over to the laptop, you can actually see that that quality is pretty good. Now, one of the other functionalities that you can do with the actual scaler is you can choose uh, individual inputs and then you can rescale them. So you, um, my canvas at the moment is uh, 1080 or uh, 1920 by 1080. So if I wanted to, I could actually um, uh, expand that image, but at the moment I'm, I'm happy with that as it is. So the um, last thing I wanted to show you is also just the test patterns. If I just flick over to test pattern, Basically, you can see it's showing you a test pattern as well. Um, and I believe that you can, uh, there's different test patterns, um, but the test patterns are really good function. I actually really like this one. Uh, that's pretty much it. So this is the VP790 by Kramer. Um, it is a Genlock presentation scalar switcher. It's pretty good. I mean, I'd say it's probably entry level to advanced users. Um, it'd be great for a small meeting room where you might have random inputs. The great thing about it is it basically has every input that you could need on the back of it. The other great thing that I love is that the output, you can have 15 pin VGA um, uh, DVI or HDMI, um, obviously with, with a converter and 3G SDI out. But the great thing, um, as I was saying, is all of those can be run concurrently. So you can have them all running outputs at the same time. So that's pretty much it from me. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I've, I'm, I kind of wanted to show you how it works rather than just kind of talk about it. I want to show you around the menu and kind of show you with some inputs running on it as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please like the video below and subscribe to our channel. Um, if, you, if there's any products that you'd like us to review or anything that you've um, personally seen and just want some more information about, leave a comment below on the video or contact us in, in the community. That's crewpass.com. If you're not a member of Crew Pass, you should be.